Hey. It is now September 23rd. It's like 12.30. It just became that. And it's the anniversary of the channel. And I'm here and tired and I'm going to... Real, I realized we didn't really record anything for it this year, so I found some Flappy Bird fanfiction that I'm going to read. And I hope... I hope that... Yeah. I uh, picked up three of them, kind of short ones. And we're going to just get right into it. Yeah. We will start. Flappy versus the app. One day, one day, Flappy Bird decides to argue with the app. However, he is in for a nasty surprise. This is a very short story, so do not be disappointed if it's too short. You got it. Gimme cake, the canary yelled to the Mario pipes. The pipes didn't shoot cake out. The bird was very disappointed. Very. I'm not going to fly through those gaps again. The pipe still didn't do anything. I'm staying here. Gasps could be heard from a thousand miles away. Flappy Bird had just argued with the app. Sharp fangs emerged from the border of the app, and on those fangs were quite a few brutally murdered birds. They had all argued with the app before, and they had gotten punished by the fangs. Flappy didn't want to die. He just wanted cake. Now he was about to be punished. But then he saw a gap. A gap between the two fangs. Who would use his flappy skills to go through the gap. Then he could be saved from the fangs. He flew up with his chubby little wings and forced himself forward. He was only a millimeter away from the fangs. He would li either live or die. He closed his eyes and pushed once again. Light blinded him. Am I dead? Yes, he had died. Typical Flappy. All right. Flapping to the end. got some meat on this one. Flappy is kidnapped and thrown into a game of death she could never have prepared herself for. The air was stale. Flappy sat close together with other birds in a cramped metal container. There must have been a hundred of them, all waiting together for what they did not know. Flappy was a young bird. Her bright yellow Flight feathers had only grown in a few weeks before. She had she only had the opportunity to fly a handful of times since then, all before she was taken. The large ones had scooped her up along with her siblings. They'd been separated. Now she was surrounded by strangers. Few had begun to speak to one another, only in whispers. The dread for what was to come hung in the air, silencing the majority. Flappy found herself unable to join in the small conversations going on around her. Her own fear was too great. She had heard rumors of the sacrifices, of young birds stolen from their homes and taken to an unknown location. None had returned, and few had ever witnessed the kidnappings, let alone what had happened after. The stories had always frightened Flappy when she was a hatchling sparking nightmares and speculation amongst her and her siblings, but never had she suspected that the stories were as real as they had been terrifying, nor did she ever truly believe that she would be among those who were taken. She heard the cage's door open, and for just a second light flooded into the cramped metal container. A giant hand entered, and an older bird up front was suddenly snatched from their numbers. His startled cries echoed throughout the small enclosure. He was pulled from the container, and the door closed. A minute or so passed before she heard a sickening crunch, and the door was opening once again. The next young bird snatched. 
Flappy lost track of how many times the process had repeated. More than half of the population of the cage was gone, but despite the now ample room, Flappy and the other birds had sat all huddled together as far as the door as they could, each one unwilling to be the next chosen by the hand. The rare, small conversations had ceased completely. Inside the container was a complete silence. Even from her spot towards the middle of the group, Flappy could hear nothing but occasional shuffling and ruffling of feathers from the terrified birds around her. The door opened again, and the birds around her began pushing, shoving, desperate not to be taken. Flappy felt herself being pushed from the middle. She tried hard to push back, to fight the crowd, but she wasn't strong enough, and she was quickly ejected from the group. Fear came over her as she felt the hand approaching. It seemed to move side to side, searching for its victim. The hand snatched her, none too gently. Flappy squawked with discomfort and pain as she was dragged out. Her desperate screeches ignored. Light filled her vision, blinding her for a second. She heard the door was shut, and she turned around and placed on a small wooden platform. The ceiling shut before she could react, and Flappy was left to examine her new surroundings. Before her room loomed, the only visible exit, a space between two long horizontal strips of walling painted green and speckled with irregularly spaced splotches of red. The walls lay parallel to each other. The wall to her right appeared to be a mirror of some sort, and it reflected the one to her left, which is some sort of sickeningly happy painting designed to look like the outdoors, complete with a tall building... Build, sorry, the tall buildings of a city in the distance. The platform was dropped out, out from under her, and Flappy began to fall. She had never felt so heavy before. Even her first time flying had been easier than this. She barely had the time to force her body to keep afloat before she re realized the back wall had begun moving towards her rapidly. Desperately, she worked to align herself between the gap in the walls, the green walls, as she flew. Her heavy body forcing her to continuously flap as to avoid falling. As she approached the green walls, she let out a horrified squawk. What she had assumed to be red paint was in fact blood. Yellow feathers stuck to some areas, and when she glanced down, she could see the horrible, crushed remains of the birds who had left them. Bones were exposed in some areas, organs indecipherable from being crushed repeatedly. There appeared to be dozens, if not hundreds, of corpses. Flappy felt as though she was going to be sick, but she knew she had to keep going. Flapping desperately, she made it past the walls. As she felt the sharp pang of relief, before dread filled her anew and she saw another set of walls, nearly identical to the last, save for the gap's unchained position. Oh, on and on she went. Pat the pattern continued. Five walls, ten walls, twenty, thirty. By wall forty, she could barely keep her wings flapping. Exhaustion filled her small body. Do these walls ever stop coming? Flappy thought to herself after the 43rd set of walls. As the 46th set of walls loomed before her, her arching wings gave out for a second. Flappy recovered quickly, but as the walls approached, she realized she was too, sm too close to the bottom wall. Quickly, she flapped upwards, avoiding it, only to hit the top wall. Rough. Pain flashed through her body as she fluttered down to the floor as she laid there dying, a halo of blood surrounding her limp form in the walls, approaching to crush her as she thought she heard a voice. Fuck, 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 damn this fucking game. No End by Maribeth. Maybe I killed a man. Maybe I've died and gone to hell because I killed... This idea appeals to me. I'm a killer. I hold no remorse. I have killed and will kill again. The Flappy Bird fanfiction. Really. Help! Help me! I can't see an end. There is no end. I see pipes. I see pipes forever. 
all of them perfectly arranged with just the right amount of space between them to ruin my life and taunt me over my deformed wings. I keep crashing into them. Every time I fall, I'm immediately back, flying through pipes. Is this some sick, twisted experiment? Am I in a lab somewhere, locked away and being observed as I flap through? I don't remember anything before this. I don't remember my name. I am a bird. Did I have a family, friend, friends, a job? Maybe I had a nest, a nest of tiny little orange and red birds. Maybe I had a mate. Maybe I was in performances. Maybe I was a laughing stock. Did people cage me and laugh at my little wings? Maybe I was criminal. Maybe I killed a man. Maybe I've died and gone to hell because I killed. This idea appeals to me. I am a killer. I hold no remorse. I have killed and will kill again. It's not real, but then again, I have no right to deem what is reality and what is falsehood. I'm a bird trapped into what very fuck, very well may be hell, or a laboratory, or an alternate dimension, or a game, or my own mind. I am a bird. I am a killer. I am a performer. I am a writer. I am a politician. I am a plumber. I am whatever I say I am because I am nothing. I have left behind worldly things and possessions. I have flapped away from this plane of existence. I have transcended physical being. I, Flappy Bird, am a god. So are you, you happy with that? That that good? Yeah, me neither. Hang on. We are going to do it. I'm going to do this. Whoops. I was in a gaming clan a long time ago. There was a member who wrote this. And my starter. Mm, this is a mistake. Because I only kind of remember this, and I remember it being pretty fucked. Um, <laughs> uh, it's rated M. So know that. It's rated M. <clears throat> this story of mine takes place in the Fire Red Leaf Green games. The female trainer doesn't have any official name other than Green, so I'm using the name I gave her when I played Leaf Green. I don't own Pokemon or any of the copyrights thereof. Also, there's a bit of naughty things going on near the end of this chapter. Bye, Mom. I'll just be going out for a walk. A small, uh, no, a small girl, I don't know. No, not gonna. No, no. See ya. Bye. Have a good day. Happy anniversary of us. Bye. <laughs>